A bass reflex loudspeaker is a speaker that has some sort of port or tunnel in it that makes the speaker louder at very low frequencies. And in this video, we're going to take a look at how that works. In order to understand how a ported speaker works, we first need to take a look at some basic principles that you have to understand first. Most loudspeakers use a cone that moves back and forth in order to produce sound waves. So you've got this cone which is made out of paper or plastic or metal of some sort, doesn't really matter. And this cone is moving back and forth and when it moves forward it creates positive air pressure, when it moves backwards it creates negative air pressure. And so when it keeps moving back and forth it produces a sound wave. The problem is, a cone also produces a sound wave at the back. So when the cone moves forward, it creates positive pressure right in front of it. But at the same time, it creates, obviously, negative pressure behind it. And when it moves backwards, it creates negative pressure in front of it, but positive pressure behind it. And so if you were to have a cone in open air, which sometimes happens, right, you can do that, the sound produced by the back of the cone will cancel out the sound produced by the front of the cone, which is bad because that will make the speaker quieter. It won't, obviously, it won't make the speaker completely quiet because in the real world there's always reflections and all that stuff, um, but it will matter. It will make the speaker less loud. So therefore, what we do is we build speaker cabinets, we build boxes around the back of cones, right? That's what a speaker cabinet is for. So that when the cone moves backwards, uh, it creates negative pressure in front of it, and that also creates positive pressure behind the cone, but that positive pressure is inside the speaker box and cannot escape, and therefore it cannot cancel out the negative pressure produced at the front, and vice versa, of course. So that's what a speaker box does. It makes sure that the sound from the back doesn't meet the sound from the front, and therefore the speaker won't cancel itself out. That's pretty nice. So now, with the knowledge we have at this point, a bass port or a ported speaker design seems like an inherently awful idea, right? Because you're making a hole in a speaker box, and when you make a hole in a speaker box, the sound from the back can escape. When the cone moves forward, creating positive pressure, it creates negative pressure inside the box. Therefore, air is sucked into the port, and negative air pressure at the exit of the port, which cancels out, etc. You've essentially made a hole in the cabinet, which is a bad idea, isn't it? Well, not really, because a base port is not an ordinary hole, it's a tunnel. And that means that the speaker will now start working as what we call a Helmholtz resonator. That sounds complicated, but it's the same effect that you find when you take a bottle and blow over the neck, right? You hear that sound, that you know that? It's the same effect. So how does that work in a speaker? Well, we can say that the air inside a speaker is like a spring or a rubber band because air is a gas and it can be compressed and decompressed and so can you compress a spring and decompress a spring. So it's like a spring. And we can also say that the air inside a port is like a mass that is attached to this spring. So to illustrate this, I have got a device right here. This is a spring or a rubber band, but that's essentially the same thing as a spring. And I've got this weight attached to it, and the weight is uh, this bucket of marbles, right? But that doesn't really matter what the weight is. So this represents the air inside our speaker, which can be compressed and decompressed. This represents the air inside the port of the speaker, which is like a mass. And my hand represents the cone of the speaker, which is able to move like this, okay? Let's see what happens in a ported speaker when the cone is moving at a high frequency. So we're playing a high frequency sound. You see that? This is moving rapidly, but this mass is staying roughly in position. So when the speaker plays a high frequency sound, the air inside the port stays in position it doesn't really move, and therefore the sound from the back of the cone doesn't escape. 
So at high frequencies, apparently, the port just acts as if there is no port at all. A ported speaker acts the same as a closed speaker. Okay, but now we're going to do something interesting. What we're going to do is we're going to um, lower the frequency. So I'm starting off by moving at the same high frequency as I just did, but then I'm going to slow down. So I'm going to lower the frequency, lower and lower and lower, until at some point we will reach an optimal frequency, which we call the resonant frequency. And you'll, you'll see what I mean when it happens. Okay, so we start with the high frequency. And now we lower it. And now we've reached the optimal frequency, the resonant frequency of this system. And look what happens, okay? Observe for a few seconds what's happening here. In case you didn't see it, the interesting thing is that when my hand moves out, so away from the center, so does this mass. It also moves out or away from the center. And when my hand moves towards the center or in, so does this weight. If we translate that to our speaker, it means that when our cone moves in and the air inside gets compressed, the air inside our port also moves in. And when our cone moves out, the air inside our port also moves out. And so the air inside the port is now in phase with our cone. And therefore they create the same pressure at the same time. So now the port isn't cancelling out the cone, it's in phase with the cone and therefore it's making it louder, it's helping. So when the cone moves forward and creates positive pressure, the bass port also creates positive pressure and that makes the speaker louder. In fact, in theory, it makes the speaker twice as loud. So with a bass port, at high frequencies, it does nothing. These marbles are noisy, by the way. And at, at its resonant frequency, it will help the speaker and it will, be, it will make the speaker louder. Now, there is one thing, though, with bass ports that is not so nice, which is that if you go below their resonant frequency, something quite bad will happen. Let's see. You see this? When I move my hand below the resonant frequency of this system, it means that when my hand moves in or towards the center, this thing starts moving out or away from the center. And when my hand moves out, this thing moves in. In other words, they're out of phase again. So now our base port starts acting like a hole. So that frequency is lower than the resonant frequency. It slowly starts acting more and more like a hole in a speaker. So that's why speakers with ports in them um, have a the resonant frequency of that ported speaker is also quite often the lowest frequency they can properly play back because if you play a frequency below that their port starts becoming a disadvantage it starts acting like a hole and the speaker will become really quiet but of course if your port is tuned at 40 hertz in, in the typical music that people play, there are not many tones below 40 hertz, so that speaker will do absolutely fine. How do you determine what frequency is a bass port is tuned at? Well, in this system, the resonant frequency depends on how stiff the rubber band is and how heavy this weight is. In a speaker, the resonant frequency depends on the amount of air in the box because more air is more compressible than a tiny amount of air so that's equivalent to the stiffness of a spring and then of course since the weight represents the mass of the air inside the port the bigger your port is the more mass there is inside it so the size of the port and the size of the cabinet and their relation that determines um, the frequency that the base port will work at well, anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video, and of course, thank you for watching.